Hello and welcome to our next video. Today we're going to look at the negative. Uh, it looks like this. I'll show you some nice notes and some summaries that you need to know. If you're in grade 4, 5, 6 or 7, or even if you're in the high school and you really struggle with this section, uh, have a look here, start here, and this should sort you out. Remember that we have the ebook available, Afrikaans Made Simple Cheat Sheets, short little book. It'll teach you everything you need to know in a few days. All these notes that I, that I use um, uh, can uh, come from this book. Uh, it's available for 29 Rand at ITSI. That is a digital platform like uh, Amazon Books, similar kind of thing. You just buy it there and download it on your device. Please support us. Um, if you are a school and you would like to order the more comprehensive workbooks, the, the thicker books where the kids can write in and you can order them with or without the answers, they are the cheapest books in uh, the country on the market. I believe they are also the most comprehensive. So if you are a school, um, just email me and you can get the copies uh, cheaper. That's, that's the email address. This is the grade 4 and 5 book and this is the, the grade 6 and 7 book. You can also WhatsApp me. That's my number there. Or just give me a call and we'll sort out something that suits the budget of your school. If you are a learner and you just want to get a single book, pick up a book from CNA. Unfortunately, that is a bit more ex expensive because of CNA's markup. They, they mark up, their markup is just incredible. And it's, it just is what it is, unfortunately. Um, but if you want the ebook, that's the cheapest uh, option. 29 Rand will get your school to order it. So let's look at the negative. Uh, Ken, isn't a few tricks to this uh, section? So let's see that we are recording. Yes, we are. If you struggle with this section, there are a few tricks that are involved here. So. Uh, just bear with me. We'll go through it. This will be a full lesson that covers everything that you need to know about the negative if you are in the primary school. Okay, so it's also known as a form, and it's, it's that thing where you use a double knee. So that makes Afrikaans quite unique in that it has two knees in the, the sentence. Um, that changed the sentence into in the negative like I am going to the rugby I'm not going to the rugby in English you have not in Afrikaans you have akhan ni na di rugby tu ni um, you have the double negative whereas in English you only have a single negative I have no idea why that is the case okay so we get different types of sentences. Okay, so each one is a different rule. So we get a statement. So a statement is you're just saying something. You're making a statement like I am tired or I'm going to cricket practice later. That's a statement. It's not a question and it's not a command. Okay, so you're not asking a question and you're not telling someone what to do. You're just saying something, just making a statement. Okay, that's the first rule. So to to change a statement into the negative, uh, you use the two knees. Now, where do they go in the sentence? That's what's important. Well, they, the first knee goes after the verb, after the first verb in the sentence. The second knee goes at the end of the sentence. All right. Even if there's an infinitive, the eye of Stompy, you might wonder, it doesn't go after the infinitive. Yes, it does. The knee will be the last thing in the sentence. Okay, so thinking back to Stompy, you started with something like the subject, or you could have started with the T, the time. Then you had your verb, your verb one. After that verb, you need to have a knee. Okay, so that's what we have here. So there's the late back slop and the boom. So you're going to just pop a knee. After that uh, verb and a knee at the end of the sentence. That changes the, the sentence into the negative. The leopard is not sleeping in the tree. It's awake or it's sleeping in the bush. Okay. Diane spiel klavier in her karma. She's playing piano in her room. Okay. So firstly, you need to identify 
that it's a statement. Okay. Then you need to find the verb. So the verb is typically after the subject. There it is. You're going to put a ni after that and a ni at the end of your sentence. She's not playing piano in her room. She's playing the violin or she's playing it somewhere else. Okay, so just watch out for this though. I have a note here for you. Don't bother taking notes. It's all in the ebook. So just get the ebook, 29 Rand. Spend your tax shop money today for today on, uh, <laughs> on buying an ebook. Um, or don't, it's fine. Sometimes there will be one knee in a sentence. Okay, so when does this happen? Um, it's when you have a present tense sentence. Okay, it'll be in the present tense. And there's only a subject and a verb. So it's a short sentence. Okay, so you can just sort of tell yourself, yo, if the sentence is really short, um, you you just need one knee. But if it logically makes sense, if you look at the sentence here, the man sing, the man is singing, there's the first verb, but it's also the last word in the sentence. Okay, so where, were, where would you put two knees? You can only put one knee there, then there's no end of the sentence. You can't say knee, knee. Okay, you need one knee there. Okay, so just watch out for that. That didn't trick you with that. Okay, uh, same with this one. You're gonna slop, um, you're gonna slop knee. Okay, only one knee there. All right, so that is for statements. So let's just look at a few examples here. Um, die rekenaar is baie besig, or baie stadig, sorry. The computer is very slow. Okay, so you want to say the computer is not very slow. They're going to say to you, change the sentence into the negative or into the onkennende form, the negative. Then you look for your first verb. There it is, as. Put a ni after the verb and a ni at the end. Done. Oh, if I can just type ni, it will help. Ni, there we go. After the verb and at the end of the sentence. Ons swim elke middag in die rivier op die plaas. A bit of a longer sentence. We swim every afternoon in the river on the farm. Okay. Look for your first verb. There it is. Swim. Put a knee after it. And a knee at the end of the sentence. The arend sit boer in die boom. The eagle sits up in the tree. There's your verb. Put a knee after it. And put a knee at your end of your sentence. Die paras begin sans kwaak. The frogs start... Um, what is the noise of croaking, eh? Uh, in the evening. So, okay, so it's summer and they're starting to make their noise. Um... There's two verbs here. Okay, there and there. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. You're just going to put a ni after the first verb and a ni at the end of the sentence. Okay? Buy two buckies in the motor feeds. Dad has two buckies and a motorbike. Okay? Het is the first verb. It's your past tense first verb, which we'll still cover. We'll still cover past tense. And then you have a ni. At the end of the sentence. Sorted. He does not have two buckies and a motorbike. Okay, so that covers um, statements. All right. Now, let's move on to what you do with questions. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky, but not too bad. Okay, so how do we change a question into a negative? Are you tired? You would answer no. I am not tired. Okay. In the negative. You're not going to say, yes, I am. Remember, you're answering in the negative. Okay. So, first of all, you want to say no, comma. So, you answer with near. All right. You answer with near. Okay. And then again, the, the, you need two knees. You need a knee after the first verb and a knee at the end of the sentence. Okay. 
Looking at number three there, sometimes uh, I see students get a bit confused with the word order after the near, like near akis nimuchni. If you think about it like this, you you follow the stompy word order after the near. So it's near, comma, then you need a subject. Okay. You need a subject after near. Near, comma, subject. Verb one, time, object, manner, place. Verb two, infinity. Okay. And then the last thing, and this is the tricky thing, is that you have to change the pronoun so that it makes sense. So what are pronouns? Okay, so pronouns are things like hey, he, say, she, hola, them, us, ons, um, ek, me, I. Okay, so you have to answer the question so that that pronoun makes sense. Are you tired? You'll say, then you'll answer and say, no, I. I'm not tired. So you change the subject there. Okay. You're not going to say, no, you are not tired. You can't just leave the pronoun in that same um, form as it's in. So just be careful with that. Okay. So let's let's see this. Let's see how this works. Yet, hey, Bryflas. Does he eat um, brying meat? Then you'll say, nie, hey, yet ni, bryflas ni, no, okay, your pronoun doesn't have to change, he, because you're talking about some person there in the room, he does not eat, so there's your nie that you put in, okay, there's your subject, verb, first ni, second ni, hey, yet ni, bryflas ni, okay, now someone's asking you yet, yeah, Drink ye by water. Do you drink a lot of water? You answer no. I. You don't say no, you don't drink a lot of water. You say no, I. So what is I? It's ek. Okay. So after the near, you need a subject. Ek. What comes after the subject? Verb. Drink. After your first verb, you need a knee. By a water, knee. Oh, I have two knees there. Okay. Near ek drink knee. By a water, knee. Okay. Sorted. Draf jelle elke ochend. Near ons draf nie elke ochend nie. No, we don't jog every morning. Okay. Do you, you all, plural of you, y'all. Okay, like the American y'all. Do you, the lot of you, drug every morning? You'll say, no, we don't, when you answer. Okay, careful with the pronoun. Nie ons traf nie elke ochend nie. Nie after the first verb, and a nie at the end. Sorted. Okay. So let's just do a few examples here. Yeah. Is Weinand in grade 7? Is Weinand in grade 7? So your subject after the nie, Weinand, then your verb is nie after the verb, grade 7, and a nie at the end of the sentence. Vlieg die uil elke aand oor die huis? Does the owl fly over the house every Evening. Elke aunt is every evening. So near, then you need a subject. So the ale, remember stompy after the near. Then you need your verb. Ni after the first verb. Elke aunt word in the rest of the sentence. And the knee. Don't forget the last knee. That's a common mistake. Is to forget that last knee. You're like, ah, I'm done. And then you put a full stop. And then you throw away a mark. Okay, so if you leave off the the knee after every sentence, you get 50% for your test. That's how easily you can get a, <coughs> a lower mark. Okay, mag ek pudding kry? Mag ek pudding kry? May I get pudding? Am I allowed to get pudding? No, you're not, because you are 
on diet. Okay, you're getting ready for swimming season. Mag ek pudding kry? Nee? No, you. So what is you? Jy. Okay, and jy is also your subject. Mag nie pudding kry and a nie at the end of the sentence. Okay, how jy van pizza and hamburgers? You'll say nee, ek. Right. No, I don't like pizza and hamburgers. I like salads and water. Busy water. Ak ho. Ho is your first verb. Ni after the first verb. Ni fun pizza and hamburgers. Hamburgers. Ni. Okay. Don't forget the last ni. Do not forget the last ni. Do not forget the last ni. Is jylle na die partijkie genooi? Are you all, y'all, y'all sitting there, are you invited to the party? Nee, you'll say. We, ons, ons, say. Eh? If you struggle with pronouns, you'll have to buy the book because there's a section that teaches you how to sort out these pronouns. Especially when you get to the higher grades, it becomes very important to sort out the pronouns correctly. And it, yeah, you, you cannot use a language without pronouns. So, sorry, you're just going to have to get the, one of the books and do that and just learn that section. It's one of those things you just have to learn and invest some time in because you do it once for the next five years or whatever until you pass a full consummate trick. Okay, is jylle na die partijkie genie? Nee, ons is, is is the verb, what comes after the first verb? Nee, na, in the rest of the sentence, partijkie genoe, and don't forget the last nee, don't forget the last nee, please don't forget the last nee. Cool, so that statement's done, that's questions, done. Rule number three, okay, so yeah, it gets even trickier. Okay, so sometimes you get these words that change in the negative, okay, and you get them in English as well. Um, for, exam for example, iemand, someone, will change to no one or nobody. Iemand changes to niemand. So now think of it like this. This word changes, but built into that word is the first ni. You're still going to have your second ni later on in the sentence. So instead of having two ni's, you're going to have this word that changes. Okay? And then you're still going to have your other ni at the end. That's it. Okay. How do you know which words change? You learn them. You just le you just learn them and you practice them. That's why you take a few weeks sometimes to practice one grammar section. You should spend like two weeks on this in class. Um, you should do lots and lots of sentences. And where can you find lots and lots of sentences? There and there. You can find lots of sentences or get this book. And you'll find lots of sentences that you can practice, okay, and learn these things so that you recognize them. So if they say you can't study for Afrikaans, they are talking nonsense. They are lying to you because you can learn this. And if you don't, if you tell your parents you don't have homework for Afrikaans, it's not true because you could be learning this list. You could print this page out and put it up in your room. It's one page that you have to learn for the next five years. Just, it makes sense. Learn it now. Okay, so you'll also have to know what these things mean. Like iemand, you must know that it means someone. Arends, you must know that it means an Arends. Um, what are some popular ones? It's nog, still. It's almost in every test. Okay. 
do you still have that cricket bat? Nee, I can't anymore that cricket golf. Nee, not anymore. Okay, this one. Uh, all. Heet jij al die flick gezien? Have you seen the movie yet? You'll say no, not not yet. Nog niet. I've been studying Afrikaans, not yet. Okay, so um, it's one of those things when you when you have to be able, and you will get this in tests and exams. I can. It's just like it's something to test. So obviously teachers will use this. Okay, so how does it work? Here's a few examples. Okay, ek is al baie moeg. Um, you must be able to spot that all. If you miss that all, you're going to get this wrong. Um, you're saying, I, I'm very tired already. I'm not tired yet. Not yet. Because nog nie. I'm not yet. I'm not yet tired, if you translate it directly, if you know what I mean. Okay? So there's your your first knee. Okay, it goes with nog nie. And there's your second knee. Okay? Het jy iets geëet? Have you eaten something? If you miss the eats, you, you stuffed. You're going to miss this. You're going to get this whole thing wrong. Okay? You might get a mark for near and for the near at the end. If you're lucky. Okay? Het jy iets geëet? Nee. It's a question, so you recognize, you go, so this is your thinking process, you go, okay, this is a question, it's not a command, it's not a, it's not a statement, okay, it has a question mark, so it's a question, okay, you see a, a like a pronoun there, okay, and you spot the eats, you go, oh, okay, this is quite a tricky one, so answer the question with near. Het jij iets geëet? Nee, ek. After the nee, use stompy word order. Okay, ek, subject. Jij, change to ek. Het, after your first verb, now you have your, um, your negative word. Okay, nog niks geëet nie. Don't leave the last nie. So there's a lot that you had to do in that sentence. If you could have done that sentence, then you, I would say you're pretty jacked and you're ready for, you're ready for your test. If you could do that one. Okay. Will you eat yet? Do y'all want to eat something? Do you all, you guys want to eat something? Okay. You spot that it's a question. First of all, you see that there's a pronoun. You see that there's a word that will change. Okay, so there's a lot happening. You'll say nia. Yellow changes to ons. There's your first verb. After your first verb, you have your negative word. And then at the end of the sentence, you have your last ni. Sorted. Okay, we'll go off. This is just a different type of one. I don't think we're going to do this now. Pointless. Okay, let's take that out. All right, so here are a few examples, and then we're almost done. Um, okay, so let's just go through this. Can ek iets yet? There's your negative word. It's a question. Remember to change your pronoun if it has to change. Near yay. You can't eat anything. Can I eat something? No, you can't eat anything. You're on a you're on a diet, remember? Nee, jij kan niks eet nie. Full stop. Okay? I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go through this quite quickly because we've done the rule now. Okay. I hope it's not too fast. Just watch the video again or buy the book. Wil iemand rumai se? Does Anyone want ice cream? Does? Do? Oh, my English is not great. Uh, nee, niemand. So you will go, you will start with niemand there because niemand is the subject, but it's also your negative word. Tricky. Niemand 
then you need a verb vol remes e ni full stop done just remember the copy on the e okay Het jy my skoene ergens gesien? Nee. It's a question. Okay, so nee. No, I haven't seen your shoes anywhere. Somewhere? Have you seen my shoes somewhere? No, I saw... I haven't seen your shoes anywhere. Okay. Nee, ek, het, subject, verb, jou skoene, nergens, gesien nie. Ok. Dan. Het jy al ooit een leipaard gesien? Dit is jou woord, the changes. Nee, ek het nog nooit een leipaard. I've never seen a leipaard. In fact, I have not. I've seen a cheetah, but I haven't seen a leipaard. Ik heb het niet gezien. Is er iets in die ijskast om te eet? Is er iets om te eet in de fridge? Nee, je hebt het vijf keer al gezien. Er is niets. In die salads. Nee, daar. Dus we beginnen met daar. Daar is je subject plaats marker. Oké, niet te veel over dat. Daar is. Then you need your negative word, nix, in the ijskas, uh, om te eet, this one has an infinitive, om te eet, nie, if you don't know what infinitive is, go to the stompy video, sort that out, don't leave off the last knee there. Kon jy al vir die toets begin leer, could you start studying for the test yet? If you miss the all, you're gonna get this wrong. All is so common, so popular, especially when you head into high school. You'll see it's an if, like all and nog. Those are the two, two ones that they always ask. So you don't, just learn it, just learn it, just learn it before you go to the test. It's easy. Near ak subject ak. Because they're asking, have you started studying for the test? No, I. Okay, nie, ek kon nog nie. Okay, all changes to nog nie. Vir die toets. Vir die toets. Begin leer. And in nie, at the end of the sentence. Done. Is jy nog kwaad vir my? You don't say kwaad met, eh? In Afrikaans, I know, it's a common mistake. Is jy nog kwaad vir my? Are you still mad at me? Still upset with me? Nee, ek is nie meer kwaad vir I'm not mad at you. So here are two pronouns that you need to change. Nie meer kwaad vir jou nie. Ok? Jy, bom, en my. Or both pronouns. If you have 10 pronouns, they must all change so that it makes sense if they have to. Ok? Last one, ja. Mag ek al die roomhuis gaan haal? Can I fetch the ice cream yet? No, we're still eating. You can't fetch the ice cream yet. Nee, jy, you, are not allowed. Mag nog nie. All changes to nog nie. Die roomhuis gaan al nie. Ok? Done. Dusted. Last little rule quickly. Won't spend much time on this. Um, it's just a little trick really that they sometimes like to ask. I don't know why this happens really. Uh, I don't really understand why this happens, but it does. So when there's a pronoun in the sentence, and the pronoun is the object of the sentence, then the knee goes after the pronoun and not after the verb. So, can, so look here. Yeah, the knee. Here's your knee. Um, it 
it's not after your first verb. Do you see that? There's the first verb. You would expect the, the need to be there, but it's not. Because there's a there's a the object in the sentence is in the form of a pronoun. Okay, I hope they don't ask this in your they might. Actually I would ask one. Okay. Wil jy haar uitvra? Do you want to ask her out? Nee, ek wil haar. You pick up that there's a pronoun. Nee, uitvra nie. There's hulle. And then he comes after the hulle and not after the soul. Okay. So that is the story there. So let's just do the search. Gaan jy haar vanavond uitvra? Nee, ek gaan haar. There's an object and then nie. Vanavond uit vrouw nie. Okay, that's the story. Sal ons hulle al kan wen? Will we be able to beat them yet? Nee, ons sal hulle nog nie. There's your, um, your negative word. It comes after the pronoun. Nog nie kan wen nie. Sal Usain Bolt on kan wen in die 100 meter? No, because he's retired. Sal Usain Bolt on kan wen? Nee. Usain Bolt sal hom, there's the, the hom, some body they're talking about, sal hom nie in die 100 meter kan wen nie. That's it. Wil Hans haar by die dans uitvra? Nee, Hans wil haar nie by die dans uitvra nie. See, where's the nee? It's after the haar, after the pronoun. Okay, so that concludes it. Alright, so it's, people say negative is easy. It's not easy. There's quite a bit of practice and studying involved, and then you can still like make little slip ups. So, um, what I would do is get the ebook and then get my teacher to contact me so that we can get your whole class these books. And if they don't want to do that, I would go to CNA and get myself a copy. Um, your support will be much appreciated. There's my email. There is my number. That was the negative. Um, please look out for all the other videos. And please share these uh, videos on your WhatsApp status to your friends. That will really help them. And it will also help me. So thanks for that. I hope it helps a little bit. And signing out. We'll chat soon. Bye-bye.